So for more on this, let's bring in New York Post reporter John Levine. I mean, um, okay, here's, well, let's play James Comer. He's the congressman that would be in charge of the investigation. Let's listen to this from Fox and Friends first earlier and get your take. The more we learn about Hunter Biden's business associates, the worse it sounds. And now we have information that uh, Joe Biden just hired one of his former business associates in the Commerce Cabinet. Uh, this is wrong. This has to stop. That's why we're investigating Joe Biden and the Biden family influence peddling in the House Oversight Committee. You know, when somebody gets through White House personnel to get an appointment, they go through a lot of checks, okay? Right. To me, this makes me think that the White House is not worried about this at all. Right. Any time you see a close business partner of Hunter Biden taking a, a White House job, it should raise red flags because there, there's questions of improper access, there's questions of conflict of interest, and whether this man, John Nevergold, is still is still profiting from his relationship to the first family. And if you look at the hard drive, it is replete with examples of people, very ambitious men and women over the years, whispering in, in Hunter Biden's ear, hey, can you put in a word for me for this job, for that job, during the Obama-Biden administration. So this is not a new sort of activity. And Hunter frequently did promote his favorites to his father. Come back to the story with Griff Jenkins for a moment. Now yes. that they're admitting that this was a mistake from two years ago, and Elon Musk is threatening, I could you use that word? I guess you could. He's threatening to show the files of the Twitter censorship I mean, that would, that would be a, a showstopper. He's threatening yeah. transparency. Oh, my God, yeah. run for the hills, run for the hills. I, that Yoel Roth, who we, who we heard earlier, that man can never apologize enough. And it's just a terrible, terrible stain, what Twitter did in 2020, where you have probably the most important story of the presidential election and a, a cabal of executives at that company, in collusion with our own government, decided to just shut it down and prevent the American people from seeing it because it was against their preferred candidate. Yeah. I don't yeah. know what to say to that. And I think that um, Elon Musk will release this, and that's why you, that's the only reason you have uh, that guy finally apologizing. Right. I think, I think he, he knows. He wouldn't have apologized otherwise. And I don't totally believe him when he says, I had nothing to do with it, I was against it. Let, let's see what the, the Twitter you know, freedom files should show. But there needs to be a full truth and reconciliation style report released by Musk and Twitter about not just this, but shadow banning and censorship and the systemic discrimination against alternative voices on that platform for years. Yeah, I agree with you. Dan and I are having this discussion off the air. I'm, I have a new theory on the whole must matter now on Twitter. I think he's going to war against the government. And he's doing that because he had an edge in electric vehicles for a long time. And if you look at the Inflation Reduction Act, there are billions of dollars that will no, now go to competitors right. with Tesla. And that's part of his motivation now to root this out. What do you think about just the basis or foundation of that? That would certainly explain why the Biden administration is, is having such a, a visceral response to, to everything we're seeing. Because why, why are so many people so upset when Musk says, I'm going to bring free speech back to the platform? Mm -hmm. what they, what's their real objection here? And I, and I have to wonder if it's they're something... They're afraid they're, they don't want Trump back on the platform, even though they'd right. probably fundraise the heck off of it. I, I, am, I don't agree with the theory of the case there. I think that he's principled on free speech, and he's trying to figure out a way to make this work, and it's messy, and he's working his way through it, and he's lashing out at Apple, and then he's like, oh, wait, actually, I didn't need to lash out at Apple because That's they were weird. never going to cancel Twitter. So I think it's messy. But did Tim Maybe Cook was smart there. to keep his mouth shut for a few days. And we're going right. to get into that story. That's usually the best decision. <laughs> the whole thing could have been resolved with a phone call. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, yeah, like well, that's what I said Why on the five. I was like, what fight? happened to talking? But we would not be talking about it if that were the right, case. It was a great Sean. news cycle. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.